In this scene, we're going to learn all about object sources in Explosure Effects. We'll use the Explosure Effects source tag to add different properties to our simulation and modify them to give us different effects. We'll use textures, selection tags, and vertex maps to control exactly where we add our volume. We'll transfer other properties like velocity and color to our simulation. And finally, how splines can also be sources. Okay, so as you can see in the viewport here, we have a few bits of geometry in our scene already. We can actually find them housed inside this XP system object under utilities and inside this test objects subfolder. So you can see we have a torus primitive. We have a plane object, which is a um, single poly thick object. It has no volume. Uh, we have a sphere object that's been made editable into a polygon object. And we've added some selection tags to that. We also have a keyframed object here that's moving around. It's changing position and rotation over time based on keyframes. And then we have another object that is moving around, but this time it's based on expression tags. They're the things driving the position and rotation. So all of these geometries are here for us to be able to test out the explosion effects source tag. And I'm going to work on one thing at a time. So we're going to use the torus to begin with. We're going to hide the rest. And of course, we're going to need an explosion effects object in our scene. So we're going to go to our dynamics null, choose dynamics, XP explosion effects. Now I'm just going to move the camera to the side here so we can see the uh, torus in profile. And I'm going to move it down inside the container. I'm going to give it a bit of rotation as well. Maybe make it a touch larger than that, like so. Now, if I hit play now, nothing is going to happen because we have not communicated to the Explosure Effects solver, the Explosure Effects object, that this item, this torus, is a source. So we actually need to do that. We actually need to add a, a tag. So let's right click our torus, X particles tags, XP Explosure Effects source. So immediately now, that is telling Explosure Effects that this object is a source and to utilize the geometry that it is on or whatever kind of object it's on um, and, and pass the data from this tag into the voxels. So let's actually look at what exactly that means, what passing the data from the object to the voxels means. If I zoom into this piece of geometry, go to wireframe and I'm just going to nudge it one frame. So it's the very first frame and you'll see that inside our torus anywhere there's a voxel that is intersecting that is inside fully inside our torus data will be added to it so if we, as long as these multipliers are above zero so currently we're adding heat and fuel and this is actually what you're seeing is actually um, fuel and so the voxels that are fully within this torus right now are filling up with fuel and heat of course as well and if i press play you'll see it keeps adding it and adding it and adding it as long as this tag is at a, at a higher percentage than zero. Okay, so that was adding inside the volume of our torus, but if we uncheck the solid checkbox, the first parameter up here, we'll actually add on the surface. So it's gonna use the surface of our torus, the polygons, wherever they intersect the, the voxels, they are gonna add data. So that's actually giving us a lot thicker um, emission because obviously there's going to be more voxels at the current size that they are intersecting with these polygons. So I'm going to put it back to a solid and just to show you, just to demonstrate as I move it around, I'm moving it into different voxels and obviously the volume is then intersecting different voxels and we're adding fuel to those as well. Okay, so that's a really simple way of thinking about a source. It's just simply transferring data from this object through this tag into the explosion effect solve and we can actually multiply that that data we can actually tell exactly how much of that data we want to go into a voxel at any one time and you'll see we have these percentage sliders we have smoke heat and fuel there are main three channels here and i'm going to turn fuel off completely so i'm going to i'm going to actually completely get rid of the fuel and you'll see that's just smoke burning from the the combination of heat and fuel that was already there and eventually it just dissipates and we get nothing. So I'm pressing play. You're seeing the adaptive bounds is actually changing and that's because I still am adding heat to our simulation. So if I go to our exposure effects object and quickly change our display to temperature, you can see that we are actually still calculating something. We're still transferring or advecting data from, one ob from the torus to the exposure effects simulation. So I'm just going to jump back to our default fuel and smoke display, then back to the tag. 
And I'm just going to gradually increase the smoke. So I'm just going to really gently increase it. Let's zoom out. And you can see that the lower amounts give you much less smoke in your simulation. And of course, as we increase it, you can see those voxels being filled and constantly filled. And there we go. And it's the same for all of these parameters. If I actually turn the heat off completely, the smoke will actually lose its buoyancy. It has, no, it has a negative buoyancy. It's denser than the air. So therefore, we, we see it falling. So I'm going to turn the heat back on and you'll see it start rising as it gets carried by the, the heat. The smoke gets carried by the heat. Okay. Uh, then we have, uh, of course, we've, we've dealt with fuel. In fact, I'll just turn that back to the default, which is this. And there we go. We get another burn solve occurring. Uh, we have this curl parameter. Now we're going to come back to this a bit, um, but essentially that's adding random velocities into our simulation from our source object. So if I exaggerate this extremely, you'll see, uh, let's go back to frame zero, you'll see it's really jittering and causing a bit of chaos inside the source. Now that's a good way of creating like a really natural breakup of your of your source, because sometimes, you're, uh, in, well, often in reality, the source fuel is very unlikely to be in perfectly uniform. It's, it's quite unusual. So what you get is you get different amounts of fuel or different amounts of oxygen near that fuel, and it causes variation. So curl is a way of adding some variation to that as well. Uh, we have velocity. We're going to look at velocity a little bit later on with the animated objects. Um, we also have pressure. So pressure is essentially going to push the fluid away from the voxels, uh, sort of the, the center of those voxels. And we get a we get a more voluminous simulation. Now that's really uh, significantly more effective when we have solid unchecked, because it's essentially it's using the polygon normals there, and it pushes it out quite significantly. You can see it's expanding a lot more, and there we go. So you can see that the exposure effect source tag is the key to controlling the initial part of your simulation. The 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 input of the data so the channels the heat the fuel curl velocity smokes and that kind of thing we'll come back to color a little bit later on as well but for now we're going to have a look at that plane object so we've, we've, we're done with our torus i'm going to delete the the source tag and we can go through the same process with our plane and there we go let's go back to frame zero so we've got our plane object it has been subdivided i'm going to right click x particles tags Explosure effects source. So we're telling explosion effects that this is a source. Now let's play. And you'll notice that when I press play, nothing happens. And that is because we don't actually have a solid object here. Our plane is just one polygon thick, and therefore it is not voluminous and it cannot be solid. So we need to uncheck solid and just have it use the uh, single poly thick um, uh, polygons there, the plane. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the size a little bit just to keep the sim ticking along. There we go. And as you can see, it's just it's emitting off every single polygon in an even manner. Now the cool thing is, is we can actually utilize different inputs. We can actually use textures to control each of those channel inputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tag and you'll notice there's a twirl down on each of our sliders here. And I'm going to open both um, heat and fuel. And I'm going to use a tag, but I have to first of all add a material. So I'm going to add this material. I'm going to view the material in a shaded mode. Uh, I just hit NA there. And in the tag, I'm going to drag this material tag. And I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, we are restricting our fuel emission to just those areas of the white part of our material. So this is really cool. This is another really natural way to break up our simulation. Now, a few things to note is that our mesh needs to have a certain amount of density to it. If I make it just a one polygon object, you'll see it struggles to um, sample this material. So we actually need to make sure that our plane has enough resolution. Not 300. Let's go 32 by 32. There we go. And you'll see we get a much more accurate representation of our noise. Okay, and I've got another material here. If I just swap that out, it should now respect this new material. And so you can see that's quite procedural. We can, as long as we have uh, white and black inputs in the, in the shader, 
you can see that we can create all sorts of cool effects. Now, we don't need to use a material for this. We could actually directly input that via the texture mode. So I'm going to delete that tag and change custom to texture instead. And we can just directly input the noise there. Uh, let's, let's use a different pattern. Let's use a checkerboard like so. Let's make it a bit more coarse. And let's just duplicate that into our fuel channel. And there we go. We get a representation of that. Now, obviously, this is utilizing the UVW of this plane object. So if you had a different UVW, this would look a little bit different. And that's just something to be wary of. Okay, so that is a plane object and textures. Now, obviously, textures are going to be really handy for creating natural looking effects, particularly the noise shaders. That is a really good one. And I'm going to put that back into our test objects folder. And I'm going to pull out this sphere object. So we're back to a volumetric object. And I'm going to tell it, of course, that it is an exposure effects source. Right click, X particles tags, XP exposure effects source tag. Now, if I hit play, we'll see that we have our um, uh, interior voxels are being driven by our sphere object. But I actually want to have it on the surface for now. So I'm going to change that from being a solid like so. And we can see it filling up nicely. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to utilize the selection tags. So we're going to go back into the curl drop downs here, the twirl downs. And I'm just going to use the polygon selection for this one. If I hit play, you'll see, if I activate our polygon selection, you'll see that we are now getting emissions only on those polygons. And this is obviously really powerful as well, because maybe you've got a mesh where you only want specific parts of it to be ignited or to give off um, flames and, and uh, gases and stuff like that. So you can imagine perhaps uh, a fire breathing dragon. You only want the nose to be um, emitting. So you'd create a selection inside the nose of the dragon or the mouth. I don't know where, wherever that comes from inside a dragon. So um, let's go back to our tag and we can look at the other types of tags that are supported. We have a point selection here. So if I grab that and you'll see just like with the polygon one, we get the emission, the source emission restricted to those points. So I can obviously, I can adapt this selection. I can change it and I can run set selection. So set selection and that will overwrite our selection. And now when I play, you'll see it's been updated and we have our new emission. And of course, the last one here is edge. Edge is also supported. This looks really cool. There we go. So obviously some very, very fine control over exactly where on your geometry you want your uh, exposure effects source to come from. Okay, so there is one more kind of selection tag that we can actually apply to this object. Let's clear those out for now. Go back to frame zero. And that tag is a vertex map. So we can add those if we go to model mode, grab our sphere. I'm going to add it using the paint tool. It's a nice way of adding vertex weight. So I'm going to bring up our commander, that's shift C by default, and I'm going to grab the paint tool. So there it is. And I'm going to change it from being absolute. It's just, that's just going to add 100% vertex weight wherever I paint to add mode. And then I'm going to make it a much more gentle add mode. Then I'm just going to start painting. So let's start painting on this side here, like so. And in our exposure effect source tag, just associate this tag in our custom tag option here. And let's hit play. And you can see, of course, that we have our emission. Just like all the other selection tags, wherever there's vertex weight, we will add, uh, it'll multiply against this vertex map. Okay, so let's just uh, update that a bit there. Let's put some more over here, like so. And there we go. So that's really cool. However, there's an even better way to add vertex maps to objects, and it's procedurally done. I'm going to delete that one for now. And we have an object in uh, X particles in the utilities called the XP vertex map object. Now we're going to connect this up with our sphere. So we're going to drag the sphere into the objects field and you'll see a vertex map was added. Now this vertex map is named VM source and I'm just going to attach it to our fields here. So now that's the, the source, the vertex map that we're going to use here and the first option we have here is actually in polygons mode. So essentially it'll create a vertex map with intersecting polygons onto our sphere. So we need 
another set of polygons to intersect with our sphere. So let's add a, a, a cylinder object here. Let's make it much smaller, like so. Grab our vertex map object again, and then in the object field of our polygons layer, drop that in like so. And then if we select our object, you'll see that our vertex map is being generated around that cylinder. So at the moment, if I go down to the options at the bottom here, I can change the range to something much shorter, like say five units. And I'm gonna hit play. And you'll see that we are emitting, we, our source is actually where the cylinder is intersecting our sphere. So you can imagine this is a really useful um, tool to be able to create things like friction effects, uh, where stuff makes contact. Perhaps it's a, a, a blacksmith quenching some uh, some really hot metal or something into, into a fluid. And then you get this intersection and you create this effect like so. Okay, so that's selection maps and vertex maps inside the tag. Let's put these back inside our test objects. We can actually get rid of our cylinder. And let's take a look next at our animation and our velocity. So I can also get rid of our vertex map. Let's frame up again and drag our key animated object outside so we can see the keyframes on that. And of course, if I play back now, we'll see that it is moving around. And when I add an explosion effect source tag, let's right click XP tags and then the explosion effect source tag, uh, I can drop the those twirl downs now. If I hit play, you'll see that we are adding fluid to our simulation and wherever those intersected voxels are, wherever they are within the within our object, we get fluid emitted. Now there's something a bit unnatural about this. The, the, the object is moving along, but it's not really pushing the fluid. It's just kind of leaving it where it was. And this becomes ex especially apparent when we turn off all other velocity inputs. So if we go to our exposure effects object, go into our simulation tab, and I'm gonna get rid of all buoyancies. Oh, I need to zero those. All vorticity. And in our tag, I'm gonna get rid of all curl and all pressure. So now when I press play, you'll see we are just leaving a, a, a thin line behind. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm actually just gonna work with heat to make things nice and clear here. So go back to our exposure effects object, display tab, temperature, and then in our tag, of course, I have zeroed out our fuel and left only heat active. And there we go. So as you can see, we're animating through and something you might notice is that we are actually getting some stepping in our simulation there. Now there's something we, we have in exposure effects that can help with this. And in the solver tab, you'll see this motion gap fill. And I'm gonna set it to the full amount to 10 and you'll see that it's a much smoother simulation. Now, sometimes you'll be able to get away with lower, but as you can see, when I go to five, we get some stepping still. So set it to 10 and it's nice and filled in like so. And wherever those voxels are intersected by our geometry, it's leaving that heat information inside the voxel. However, of course, this looks incredibly artificial. And in reality, if an object is moving through or around a fluid in, in inside a fluid, it's gonna be pushing the air around. It's gonna be really influencing things. You know, when an object moves past you, when a car drives past you, the air, the turbulence from the air, you can actually feel it flushing past you. So what we need to do is we need to impart the velocity from our animated object to our simulation here. So in the tag, you can see we have this velocity option. I'm gonna put it to 100% and then all of a sudden, we're getting a much more natural looking motion from our fluid, like so. That's looking really good. And we could add some curl back in. Now, sometimes the velocity will overpower the curl, so you might wanna really increase that curl like significantly. And there you go, it's kind of breaking up the fluid and we're getting a nice, interesting solve. And if I change it from being solid, we'll actually get a much more uh, fluid added to the simulation, like so. And we can see it giving it that really natural, nice looking motion. So that's velocity inheritance. So it's, it's actually pushing velocity from the object into the simulation. And we can also do that using uh, expression objects, expression animated objects. So I'm gonna grab that 
and I'm going to grab its uh, the helix spline that it's following. And I'm just going to drop that tag onto that instead of the keyframe animated object. And let's put that back inside and hide that. Now these tags, this tag is actually animated, but it is still an expression. And let's watch what happens when I press play. I'm going to turn it back to solid. Our velocity is at 100%. Let's drop our curl down for this one. Hit play. And you can see our object moving around. But however, it is not giving us that nice velocity inheritance. It's not passing the velocity into the simulation. And the reason for that is that even though we have the velocity set to 100%, our explosion effects source tag is actually an expression based tag. So it actually has an execution order within Cinema 4D. And you can see it's currently set to priority expression zero. Uh, so it's executing um, before these two tags here. So essentially it's at zero, so it's just happening at the same time or before. And what that means is, is that there, it doesn't see any velocity. It doesn't see any velocity in the object. So therefore it doesn't transfer any to the simulation. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go into these two tags. You can do this either way. And I'm going to make these occur at different times. So I'm going to have the uh, the align to spline tag is going to execute first at negative 30, the vibrate tag at negative 20, and then obviously the next one to execute will be the source tag. Let's go back and press play and see what happens. As you can see, we are getting much more fluid coming out there. It's all simulating beautifully. Let's add our vorticity back in. It's going to look nice when we have some vorticity. Like so. There we go. Looking even more natural now. And there we go. So now the velocity isn't being imparted, even though the animation is not keyframed. Uh, there's a way that we can get the exposure effect source tag to see the velocity from expresso or expression driven animation. Okay. So whilst we have the uh, this particular source set up, let's actually add another source at the same time, just to demonstrate a concept within the exposure effects object with sources. Now um, let's add our let's add our keyframe animated object. So we've got them kind of intersecting each other. Let's right click and make this a source also. And this tag, uh, let's have it inherit some velocity. We're actually just to do fifty percent velocity. Let's press play. Make sure it's working. There we go. You can see we have a solve where uh, the temperature is increasing because we're getting some burning from the heat and the fuel and we're getting all sorts of things going on. Now, if we wanted to isolate these sources, we only wanted one particular source to be active at any one time. We can go to our exposure effects object, the sources tab, and then I can drag a particular source in. In fact, I can drag them both in at the same time. And then I can enable or disable one depending on which one I want active. So, so let's say I turn off our expression one and there we go. It's just going to ignore any tags that are on this particular object. I can obviously turn off the other one as well and then turn the other one back on. And there we go. We can see the interact. That's a quite a nice demonstration of the velocity interacting with the fluid there. And of course, it's exactly the same as the X particles emitter in that we can have this same system mode activated. And I'm going to make, I'm going to check that on and I'm going to drag our animated, our keyframe animated object outside of our bounds. And that no longer becomes a source because it is not within the same system as the exposure effects object. And then all I need to do is I need to bring it back in within that system and it becomes a, a, a source again. Okay, so before we move on to spline objects, we're going to take a look at the color transfer from the exposure effects source tag. Now I'm going to use a couple of different bits of geometry here. So let's remove those as sources. Let's grab our torus. We can use that one. And let's grab another piece of geometry. Let's grab a capsule just for a bit of variation like so. And let's add an exposure effects source tag to each so we can select them both at the same time and then exposure effects source tag. You should know the drill by now. And in the exposure effects object itself, we can actually reset the sources tab and just make sure that our objects are becoming sources. And there we go. Uh, we can see there's no buoyancy. We reset that earlier. So let's go into there and let's just reset those to their defaults. So we get a nice rising simulation. And the next step is we're dealing with color now. We want to be using the color channel. We're driving the color channel inside the voxels. So we'll go to the solver tab. 
We're going to enable color. And then I might actually improve the quality of the color channel as well. I'm going to change the advection mode to smart. And then in the display tab, we'll view that color. So the color channel is now active. And if I hit play, you'll see we get these gray looking sort of, sort of like smoke uh, esque simulations. Now, the reason for that is that if we go to the tag, you'll see it's set to color from object and the color is default at gray at the moment or white. In fact, if we go to the basic tab, display color on and let's do it on both of these like on like so and let's change one to full red and the other to full blue like so and there we go we're transferring the color from the object into the voxels and then that's being able to solve now look at that that's really quite cool we're getting that uh, where, where I'm mixing them, we're getting the magentas and the purples mixing together like so. So this is great for things like powder smoke um, or powder paint and uh, smoke grenades, that kind of thing. Okay, so that was the color from the object itself. We also have a shader mode. Now I'm going to turn shader mode on and I'm going to add a noise. This is whilst with both of them selected. And I'm going to make this noise quite high contrast. So I want to, I want to really see, clearly see the division between the, the noise. Let's make it a bit larger. And we need to make sure that we have a color in each. If I just hit play now, you'll see it's actually just not emitting any color in the black part of this, this noise. So what we can do is we can set one of these. Let's set it to red. Hit play. And you'll see that all the fluid we're seeing is red because there's only red or no color. And if we change that one to actually have a color, let's change it to full blue. Now we're seeing the actual noise represented in that fluid. So of course, that's really nice if we're creating sort of, imagine you have a surface that's made up of different sort of materials, different properties, things like uh, gravel, dust, uh, different sort of colors of soil, that kind of thing. And you kick up that dust, it would obviously the airborne particles would have the color of the dirt that they came from. And this is how we could do that. So let's, uh, let's make that a bit more representative of something like that. So maybe it's sand. And let's go to an HSV display. This is quite dark, this one. Let's make it quite yellow. There we go. Uh, we could drop the, that contrast down a little bit like so. And this will make it very muddy quite quickly, but it'll look quite natural. And you can see it's adding variation in the color to our simulation. Now, as I mentioned, the last thing we're going to take a look at is the spline as an, as an object source for our exposure effects. And let's get rid of these two, drop them in our test objects, and let's add a new spline. Let's add a spline to our scene. And let's grab a flower. I'm going to make it three petals, and then I'm going to make it smaller like so okay and what we need to do of course we need to let's drag it into our hierarchy and let's add the exposure effect source tag now you'll immediately see that there are a few different options because it's contextual this tag knows what kind of object it is actually on whether that be a piece of geometry uh, a spline or even the x particles emitter now you can see here we've got the uh, flower set up as is a spline. It's just got these uh, adaptive intermediate points. If I go to our exposure effects object, go to the solver, we're currently solving the color. I might just turn that off for now. Let's go to the display tab and let's go for just temperature for now. Go back to our source object and then I'm going to get rid of smoke and fuel and I'm just going to leave those active like so and let's hit play and see what we get. So as you can see, Along our spline, we are seeing some emissions, some uh, data being added to the voxels that the spline is intersecting, but it's kind of sporadic. And the reason for that is the interpolation on the spline. So if you look, we have it currently set to adaptive. And if I increase that and go back to here, you'll see we have far fewer points. And in fact, if I go all the way to here, we're just going to have a point at each of these changes in direction. And as you can see, it's using the intermediate points as a sample point. So we need to make sure we have enough of these. So what we could do is we could go to uniform and we could increase that to say 16 and then we'll get a smoother representation of our spline. Now it's still not perfectly smooth. And one of the reasons for that is that the voxel size is, is a bit large. So it currently set to four, 
If I hit play, you'll see we get a much finer representation of our spline. But then again, we'll need more interpolated points. So let's go to three. And we can actually drop our motion gap fill from earlier. There we go. And that's a nice representation of our spline. Now we can actually change the shape of our spline whilst we're working on this. So we could change the, uh, we could actually animate this in fact. So let's um, start here. Uh, let's go to maybe just a few frames along, a couple of seconds perhaps. Let's go to frame 60. And wherever our spline is intersecting, wherever it's uh, hitting a voxel, it is going to deploy our temperature. And there we go, we can get this adapting spline. Okay, so there's our in-depth look at object sources with our Explosure Effects source tag. Obviously, it's a very powerful tag. And when combined with objects, selections, textures, all of these things, you can create a, a huge array of different effects.